Gobekli Tepe is one of the most famous and yet mysterious ancient sites ever discovered. Its great antiquity, approximately 11,600 years old, at the end of the Younger Dryas period, shocked the scientific community which is still struggling to understand how was that possible at that time. It is usually said that the site has rewritten history, something on both academics and alternative researchers seem to agree, to a different extent though. Today we know that most of it remains unexcavated, and that it's only one piece part of a big puzzle recently rebuilt under the tag Tas Tepela, including 11 more sites clearly linked to the same culture. Were they hunter-gatherers who developed the best skills ever seen before in these groups? Was agriculture already a well-established practice? Or something much bigger than that was involved? A legacy of a lost advanced civilization, people who survived a huge cataclysm and transferred some of their knowledge and technology to local hunter-gatherer populations? What are we looking at here? Welcome to Ancient Puzzles. The excavations at the site started in 1995 directed by German archaeologist Klaus Schmidt, who sadly passed away in 2014. Large multi tonti shaped pillars made of limestone were uncovered, featuring mostly animal carvings, and it's worth noting that totems and animal statues were found as well. Radiocarbon dating shows that the earliest exposed structures were built between 9500 and 9000 BC, towards the end of the Prepotary Neolithic A, and could very well be even older. The site was significantly expanded in the early 9th millennium BC and remained in use until 8000 BC, corresponding to the Prepotary Neolithic B. Klaus Schmidt interpreted Gobekli Tepe was built by hunter-gatherers, nomadic groups who used it mainly for ceremonial purposes, and said there were few or no permanent inhabitants in the area. Far from what we would call civilization, yeah. To be fair, no pottery has been found so far, and same happens with traces of agriculture or evidence of written language. But there's a problem with Klaus Schmidt's hypothesis. For example, Stonehenge, built more than 6,000 years later, apparently was created by Neolithic farmers, so considering Gobekli Tepe is more or less the same complexity, but much bigger, it is not rare to think agriculture, and hence, specialized labor, must have been involved. It makes more sense, because basically Klaus Schmidt's interpretation leads to the conclusion that hunter-gatherers were capable of building pretty much every megalithic monument on Earth, even Stonehenge, so it's quite surprising that still, until date, that's the number one hypothesis. I wouldn't say it's impossible, I mean, it could be that hunter-gatherers were underestimated until Klaus Schmidt gave them credit, but seems more like someone, somehow, 11,600 years ago in today's Rufa region, was no longer a hunter-gatherer. By the way, it's interesting to note that genetic studies show Neolithic Northern European farmers were connected to Eastern Mediterranean populations, and it is believed those got their agricultural skills from Anatolia. Last but not least, astronomical alignments at Gobekli Tepe are still a subject of debate. This function is commonly accepted when it comes to other megalithic sites, but the T-shaped pillars might have been ones holding a roof, and that certainly complicates the whole story. Whatever the function and significance of the site, it's fascinating and incredible the level of preservation we see. Graham Hancock said many times Klaus Schmidt himself told him the site was deliberately buried, and that explains how it's that well preserved. He notes the vast majority of non-megalithic sites were not buried under the ground, being used by many different cultures over time, which increases the odds of dating inaccurately. He proposes an advanced civilization existed more than 12,000 years ago, and suffered the consequences of a global cataclysm. The Younger Dryas climatic events could have been the result of a cosmic impact, being a reasonable explanation for the extinction of many animal species, mainly in North America. A scientific paper supporting the idea was published in 2006, although it has not been exempt from criticism. Anyways, seems like some kind of catastrophic events took place during the Younger Dryas period, and if an advanced civilization existed at that time, it is possible some of the survivors passed their knowledge to hunter-gatherer populations in their efforts to restart their civilization. Who knows if that was the case, but one thing is certain. 30 years ago, it was inconceivable for academia to find something that old and complex. And maybe, just maybe, Lovekli Tepe along with the other Tastepela sites is only the tip of the iceberg. That's all for now, but more content will be uploaded. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, drop a like, and share your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!